Demonetization and Economic Impact in India Demonetization was indeed a historical move. It was a fight against corruption, black money, money laundering, terrorism and financing of the terrorists as well as the counterfeit notes. The government of India decided that the 500 and 1000 rupee notes will no longer be legal tender from midnight of 8th November 2016. In this essay, we will understand the background, the meaning of demonetization and its impact on various sectors of the country. The World Bank in July 2010 in its report estimated that the size of the shadow economy for India was at 20.7% of GDP that was in 1999 and it was rising to 23.2% in 2007. There have been similar estimates made by other Indian and international agencies. A parallel shadow economy corrodes and eats into the vitals of a country's economy. It generates inflation which adversely affects the poor and middle classes more than others. It deprives government of its legitimate revenues which could have been otherwise used for welfare and development activities. In the last two years, the government has taken a number of steps to curb the menace of black money in the economy and it included setting up of special investigation team that is SIT in short. This SIT, besides, the government enacted a law regarding the undisclosed foreign income and assets. There was an amendment in the double taxation advance agreement between India and Mauritius and India and Cyprus. These were the countries where the black money was stashed and it was brought back from India by surreptitious means. The government also reached an understanding with Switzerland for getting information on bank accounts held by Indians with HSBC Bank which was in the news for accommodating the black money. The government also encouraged the use of non-cash and digital payments in its government transactions as well as with the private individuals. Government also amended the Bename Transactions Act besides implementing the so-called Income Declaration Scheme of 2016. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's sudden announcement to demonetize 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes in circulation has been welcomed generally by people across the country. But same time, it has left many people in the lurch and it has been criticized as well. The government was also concerned about the fake Indian currency notes that is FICN in circulation, especially coming from Pakistan. In the denomination of 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes, circulation was larger than in any other denominations. The use of fake currency notes that is FICN facilitated financing of terrorism and drug trafficking across the borders. Use of high denomination notes also facilitated storage of unaccounted wealth. It was evident from the cash recoveries made by law enforcement agencies from time to time. The high denomination notes undoubtedly were known to facilitate a generation of black money. In this connection, total number of bank notes in circulation rose by 40%, it was an estimation, between 2011 and 2016. And the increase in the number of notes of 500 rupee notes was 76% and for 1000 rupee denomination notes it was 109% during this period. Now let us come back to the basic question, what is demonetization? Demonetization is a radical monetary step in which a currency unit status as a legal tender is declared invalid. That is, the legal tender is declared invalid. This is usually done whenever there is a change of national currency replacing the old unit with a new one. Such a step, for example, 
was taken when the European Monetary Union nations decided to adopt Euro as their currency that was in Europe. However, the old currencies were allowed to convert into Euros for a period of time in order to ensure a smooth transition through demonetization. Other countries like Zimbabwe, Fiji, Singapore and Philippines have known to have opted for currency demonetization in the past. In India's case, the move has been taken as said earlier to curb menace of black money and fake currency notes by reducing the amount of cash available in the country's currency system altogether. For India, this was not the first time that the government of India had gone for the demonetization of high value currency. It was first implemented in 1946 when Reserve Bank of India demonetized the, the then circulated 1000 rupee notes and also 10000 rupee notes. The government then introduced higher denomination bank notes of 1000 rupees 5000 rupees and also 10000 rupees that was 8 years later in 1954 before the Morarji government demonetized again these notes in 1978 in order to curb the menace of corruption as said before on november 8th evening prime minister modi made 500 rupee notes and 1000 rupee notes invalid people holding notes of 500 and 1000 rupees notes however could deposit the same in their bank accounts and post office accounts till december 30th of 2016 new notes of 2000 rupee notes 500 rupee notes were introduced there was no change in any other form of currency exchange whether it was check dd payment or the credit or debit card payment modes Following the announcement there have been huge crowds outside ATMs across the country as people lined up to draw currency of smaller denominations the government also imposed a weekly limit of 20000 rupees for withdrawal from the bank account and subsequently it increased it to 24000 rupees there was a facility of exchange of old notes up to 4000 rupees till november 24th of 2016 now let us see how the demonetization will impact the important sectors of economy as the demonetization initiative increases the use of plastic and electronic money cash transactions should become less and less common This will have its share of benefits for the economy apart from boosting tax coffers. The transition to cashless economy will also improve savings in financial assets which will benefit intermediaries such as banks, the national bank financial corporations, microfinance and digital money operators. Now let us see the impact of demonetizations on various sectors starting with the auto industry now in this sector the demand is likely to dip for couple of months for two wheelers but the financial analyst indicate that the demand in this auto sector is likely to go down for a couple of months for two wheelers but for passenger vehicles and tractors there will be less impact in the two wheeler industry around 35 to 45% purchases are made via financing whereas 65 to 55% are through bank cash or they are simply unaccounted but in the passenger vehicle segment close to 75 to 80% of the sales are in any case are through financing or down payments and they are made mostly by the checks and the financial institutions are involved in this so therefore this segment could face less heat as far as tractors close to 65% of the purchases are estimated as finance therefore the impact of cash squeeze on the tractor industry could be very minimal now the cement industry cement industry may get impacted in the near term as real estate demand which is about 55 to 60% of the overall demand 
especially in tier 2 and tier 3 cities may get affected in the interim period. Now demand in tier 1 cities has been weak for the last 2-3 years, but infrastructure demand now which is basically uh, backed by the government spending, it has been driving growth therefore it is unlikely to be impacted. That is an analysis by the finance people. As regards building materials, building material stocks could come under pressure due to sudden slowdown of the construction industry. Renovation work which also drives this sector would get impacted as most of the demand is serviced through cash. Dealer sales in certain projects would also take a hit. As for capital goods, it is estimated that the impact won't be big it is because it is B2B nature of the business, that is business to business transactions are involved in the capital goods, therefore therefore the impact will not be large. However, payment to sub vendors may face some liquidity issue. Now the banks. The banks and the overall sector of the banks has come into real focus because the demonetization and the Demonetization has initiated a big move towards a cashless economy and therefore it should boost savings in the financial assets. There will be a sharp infusion of deposits and relatively limited avenues to lend. The credit deposit ratio for banks it is estimated would become unfavorable. Therefore this may impact margins and in the case of a spike that is rise in the capital adequacy, it would be a positive for the margins. Thus, the some banks could see windfall gains, it is estimated on the treasury. Now, consumer staples and jewelry sector has come into focus also because of very immediate effect that was felt on this sector. The demonetization has been really good for the organized industry, but in the short term it may impact the working capital in the fast moving consumer goods, that is FMCG goods and its distribution. The liquidity has been choked up because of the demonetization, therefore it will impact FMCG revenue growth. Therefore, shift from the unorganized sector to the organized sector in the jewelry industry also. A non-banking finance company, NBFC. Now what is a non-banking financial company? It is a company registered under the Companies Act of 1956 and it is engaged in the business of loans, advances, acquisition of shares, stocks, bonds, debentures, securities that are issued by the government or it could also be the local authority or other marketable securities and these securities could be in the nature of leasing, higher purchase, insurance, etc. It is estimated that the asset finance companies may see short to medium term pain as a large chunk of business is cash based. The housing finance companies therefore may see key impact on the loan against property. There may be slowdown as people may stop buying the second or third house which may affect the developers. Small finance banks however will be big beneficiaries on the deposit front. The telecom industry. On the telecom industry it is estimated that the no material impact will be there as average transaction size is normally very small. However, slowdown in smartphone sales could potentially affect and there will be a slower adoption of mobile broadband. Then there is a paints industry. Paints companies which are into big project sales and who deal in cash component as much as 30 to 40 percent of sales will be affected and the shops which have a high retail sales cash component could be 70 to 80 percent and therefore there is an effect here also. Therefore the paint companies could face fall in sales in the short term. Now the pharmaceutical industry or the pharma industry, the demonetization is not expected to have any major impact on the Indian pharma market 
and the demand is not expected to get impacted in a big way. However, luxury hospitals may see some impact because of the cuts in the spending that will happen. Power and coal is an important industry of the country and there is expected to be a major impact that is because there is a possible fall in the interest rate and that will be positive for the industry because it will help the running cost and the investment also. In the case of coal industry for example international market also plays an important role. Now coal prices have risen recently. It is because China was cutting a domestic production. However, with the US election, President-elect Donald Trump has focused on the US competitiveness that is encouraging the local industries in the country. Therefore, there is a good chance that China will react to this. It will reciprocate by allowing the coal prices to fall again. And this should help the Indian power and coal industry.